Hey everybody, this is 8-Bit Flashback, and today I'm going to show you how to play Sega Saturn games on your Odroid XU4 using the Retroarena's port of RetroPie version 1.52, and this guide should work on future releases from the Retroarena team as well. And to play my Sega Saturn games, what better way to do it than using my custom mini Sega Saturn case for the Odroid XU4. And if you are interested in this case, this is a 3D printed case and the files are available for free down below. And if you're looking for a mini Dreamcast case, those files are available as well. So to start off with, you're going to want the latest port of RetroPie running from the RetroArena team on your Odroid XU4, and right now that is version 1.52. And I'm going to scroll over to RetroPie and open that up, and then the Arena Toolbox, I'll go ahead and click on that. And then inside there is going to be the Wi-Fi setup. So we need to be connected to the internet for this to work, whether you're using a Wi-Fi module or the Ethernet, either way will work. We just need to make sure we have an internet connection. Once you're connected, we can go ahead and back out of that menu to the previous menu, and then we're going to scroll down to RetroPie Setup. So go ahead and select that. Once this menu opens up, we want to go ahead and update the RetroPie script. So we're going to select OK. And to navigate through these menus, you're going to need a USB keyboard. So you'll navigate with your arrow keys and the Enter button to select everything. So now it's fetched the latest version of the RetroPie script, and it's asking me to confirm it. So I'm going to select OK. And this will go ahead and update it to the latest RetroPie script that is available, and that is going to be 1.63. And I believe this is going to be the final release for this port of RetroPie. And now we're going to arrow down to Manage Packages and select OK. And not to cause any confusion, but these updates are based off of using version 1.5.2. For future releases of the RetroPie port from the RetroArena team, these updates may not be necessary. And once we get inside this menu, we're going to select Manage Main Packages, because that's where the Yabao Simulator should be located, and we want to go ahead and update that. But if for some reason it's not inside this folder, you can search the other folders here as well. And once we're inside the Manage Main Packages, we want to arrow down to the Yabaos Emulator and go ahead and update that, and that should already be installed. And not to cause any confusion, we might run into another emulator that has a similar name called LR Yabaos, but that will not be the correct emulator, and that one should not be installed. We're looking for just the Yabaos Emulator. And once you get inside this menu, you want to go ahead and select Update from Binary. And this is a fairly small update, so it shouldn't take that long. I think for mine, it took about 30 seconds. And once you get done with the update, we want to go ahead and back out of all these menus and get back to the RetroPie menu. So just keep selecting back, and then finally exit, and that'll get you back to the RetroPie. And once we're back to the RetroPie menu, I'm going to arrow down to Show IP and select that, and this will display your IP address. So you want to go ahead and memorize this IP address or write it down, because we're going to use this to transfer files from my Windows computer via the file browser to RetroPie. And I'll show you how to do that here in just a few. So now it's time to head to your PC and we're going to download some files and this link will be in the description. This is going to be a mega link and inside here is going to be a starter pack for the Sega Saturn. And this will include the necessary files to get your Saturn up and going, including a test game which is going to be a homebrew game so you can verify that Sega Saturn is indeed working. Once you get the file downloaded, you want to go ahead and find that file and open it up and that's going to be in a zip archive format. And you can use WinRAR or 7-zip to go ahead and open this up. I will be using 7-zip and I'm going to select open archive. Once you get that opened up, there's going to be another folder inside there called Starter Pack. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And once that opens up, this is going to be all the necessary files we need to test Sega Saturn, which is going to include a region free BIOS for the Sega Saturn, along with a test homebrew game. So now it's time to get these files transferred over to RetroPie. So in order to do that, I'm going to get connected to RetroPie. So I'm going to use the File Explorer, which is going to be the folder icon down here at the bottom, and go ahead and click on that and get that to open up. So on the left side of the screen is my Windows File Explorer, and on the right side of the screen is going to be the archive that I just opened up. So on the address bar of the File Explorer, I'm going to type in backslash twice, and then the IP address of my RetroPie, which is going to be 192.168.1.35. So after I get that typed in, I'll just push enter, and this will actually give me limited access to RetroPie. So as you can see here, it gives me access to the BGM music folder, the BIOS, the configs, ROMs, splash screens, and themes. And there's multiple other ways out there to access RetroPie, but this is a pretty simple and easy way to do it. So now I'm going to open the BIOS folder, and this is where I'm going to be placing the Sega Saturn BIOS. And there is one that's included in the starter pack for Saturn. That's going to be right here, so I'm going to go ahead and copy that, and go ahead and drag that over to the BIOS folder. And if you want to add your own, you can, but it does have to be name specific, and that's going to be Saturn, in all lowercase letters, underscore BIOS. And the BIOS that's included in this pack is region free, so that should work with all regions out there. And now it's time to add the test game, so we're going to hit that back button, and then open the ROM folder, and then scroll down until we find Saturn. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Saturn, 
and this is where we're going to be placing the ROM. So now I'm going to copy the four files that are labeled Sonic Extreme inside here and drag those over to the ROMs folder. And this game is actually called Sonic Z Stream. The title is actually wrong, but what this is is a fan-made game that's inspired by the canceled Sonic Extreme game. So the Yavao simulator for Sega Saturn officially only supports bin and Q files for ROM formats, but other formats can work if you do have a Q file. For instance, the game I'm adding is in a true rip format, which includes a Q file, so the game will still read. So the true rip format games actually come in four different parts and that Q file is actually the only file extension that gets recognized inside Emulation Station when you're using the Sega Saturn Yabao Simulator. So once again, whatever Sega Saturn ROM you're trying to use, if it does not contain a Q file, it will not be recognized inside the Emulation Station menu and will not display. And I can confirm that Sega Saturn games that are in a true rip format do seem to have really good compatibility. And I can't provide any links for these types of games, but if you want to search for these on your own, you can. And I would use the keyword Sega Saturn True Rip, and that'll put you in the right direction. And here's some more options for the different ROM formats that are floating around out there. This game originally was in an MDF and MDS format to start with, and I used a program called ImageBurn to make a Q file, and now this game does read and load just fine. And here's yet another option, but this is more for advanced users only because there's some risk involved because we do have to make some changes to the system configuration file. And what this involves is adding different file extensions for different ROM formats, so Q files are no longer required. So on this step, I'm not going to go into great detail on how to do this. I'm just going to give a brief description. And I really don't recommend doing this. This is just more to show you how it can be done. And you should probably make a backup of your image before trying this. So I'm using a free program that I downloaded called WinSCP and I'm connecting to RetroPie using an SFTP protocol with the IP address and the username as root and password as odroid. And with this program, I can pretty much get full access to my RetroPie image. So right now I'm inside the root directory of RetroPie and I'm going to open up the ETC folder. Once I'm inside there, I'm going to scroll down until I find the emulation station folder. I'm going to open that up and then click on ES systems config. And when you click on this, this should bring up a built-in editor for WinSCP, and inside here we can edit some of the files. So we're going to scroll down until we find the system Saturn, which is going to be right here. And if you notice, for the system name Saturn, for the extensions, it has just one, which is going to be Q, and it's showing it in lowercase and uppercase. And what we can go ahead and do is add another extension here, that way you can read different ROM formats. And the ROM format that I want to add is MDF files, which use MDS files basically as their Q files. So the only extension that I'm going to add in here right now is a .mds file extension. If I was to add both the .mdf and .mds files together, that would actually display the game name twice. So all we need is the Q file for the .mdf, which is going to be the .mds file extension. So after adding the ROM extensions you want, you can go to the top left corner and save it. And now inside Emulation Station, the .mds files will display so you can load your .mdf files. Now you will want to keep in mind that not all ROMs are compatible. So just because we've changed the file extension to make Emulation Station see the game does not mean the game is guaranteed to work. But I have personally tested a few games doing it with this method and they seem to work just fine. So that's a couple different ways we can get different ROM formats to work. And now it's time to head over to our Odroid XC4 and test a game out. So the first thing we're going to do on our Odroid is go ahead and restart Emulation Station. So we'll push the Start button, go down to Quit, and Restart Emulation Station. That way it'll display the games we've just added. Now I'm going to scroll over to Sega Saturn. And inside there we should see our test game that we added earlier, which would be Sonic Extreme. And if you've added any other games, if you've done it properly, they should display here as well. And for the controllers, how it works is whatever the last controller that was configured or paired inside the Emulation Station menu becomes the current master controller for Sega Saturn that controls the menu inside the About Simulator. And you will want to keep in mind that not all controllers are compatible, but here's a few that I can confirm are working. And this is actually my favorite controller that I like to use for Sega Saturn. This is a Street Fighter Mad Cats PS3 wireless controller that comes with its own USB adapter. Here's an Afterglow PS3 controller that comes with its own USB adapter as well. And the next controller to the left is a Retro Flag Super Nintendo controller that's USB powered. And this controller does work well, but with some of the games it may have a hard time because it only has four action buttons instead of six like a Sega Saturn controller. And here's the 8-Bit Doe SF30 Pro, and this controller does work great, but I do have to use the 8-Bit Doe USB adapter to make this paired to my Odroid XU4. And I've also heard that you can use that 8-Bit Doe USB adapter to use PS4 controllers as well. And there's plenty of other controllers out there that will work, and I'll try to leave a list down below of controllers that I've heard confirmed working by other users. So I've already paired one controller inside Emulation Station, that's going to be the PS3 Afterglow controller, and now I'm going to pair a second controller, which is going to be the Mad Cat's Wireless PS3 controller. 
and I want to make this my master controller, that's why I'm pairing it second, and that will control my menu inside the Sega Saturn emulator. So all we do is pair or configure our controller like normal inside emulation station menu, but we're also going to have to configure this once we open up the Sega Saturn emulator. Because of that button mapping being different for the Sega Saturn controller, so I'm going to go ahead and start a game. And the first time you start a game, you get the option to start in the about 1x or 2x. And the 1x is going to be a lower resolution. And that's what I'd recommend for 3D gaming, but for the games that are 2D games like Rayman, you can probably use the 2x higher resolution. So by picking the right resolution, that'll help the games have a higher frame per seconds and give you a better gameplay experience. And there's a look at the Sega Saturn BIOS. And as I mentioned earlier, this game is a fan-made game that was inspired by a game that was never released called Sonic Extreme. A lot of you may have heard of that back in the day. It was a 3D game that's supposed to be released for the Saturn, but it never made it to the Saturn. And this game is called Sonic Z-Stream. So the first thing I'm going to do after loading the game is push start and select to access the emulator menu. From there I'm going to select player 1 and then select the appropriate controller that I want to use. Then it's time to configure the button mapping and it's pretty simple to do. We just use our directional pad to go up and down, select the button we want to map by pushing A and then push the appropriate button to map the button. So it's pretty easy to figure out but when you get to the B button it might kick you back because that also works as the back button. But That's no big deal, just start over and get back to your configuration menu and move on to the next button. And as I mentioned earlier, not all the controllers are compatible. So once you get to this configuration menu, if you can't move up and down and map all the buttons correctly, then that means that controller is not compatible. As far as the analog mapping goes, that's really not that important because a lot of the games never use this feature in the first place. If you want to configure the mapping for the second controller, you can do that here as well. You just select player 2, then the appropriate controller. But to make all these selections, you will have to use your master controller. So you're going to use your master controller to make all your selections inside the emulator menu. And once you get to the button mapping part, for instance, when you select A for the button mapping, you'll push A on the controller that you want to map. So the button mapping can get a little confusing, and I would recommend once you get two controllers paired, probably not to mess with any more controllers, because as soon as you pair a new controller, that might throw all your button mapping off, and you might have to start over from scratch. So I've been playing this game in 1x mode, which is the lower resolution, but here's a quick look at the higher resolution. And back to the lower resolution. And just to let you know, the game is playable on the higher resolution if you want to try it out. But at times it does run slightly slower, and if you want to exit a game, you just push start and select, and then navigate down to exit. Also inside that menu, when you push start and select, you can activate the frames per second, so you can monitor what the frames per second actually is. Now let's go ahead and try out Mortal Kombat Trilogy, and if you want to access another configuration menu for the simulator, you can push A continuously when loading a game, and that'll bring you to this menu right here. And you can change that resolution if you choose to, and I'm going to go ahead and change it to 2x for that higher resolution. And just to let you know, there does seem to be a bug in the button mapping every once in a great while, maybe one out of 15 times I go to log in to play a two player game and the second player does not get recognized. And when this happens, I just access the emulator menu, go to my player two and go ahead and remap it and then it starts working again. And I would consider this just a minor issue and I'm sure this will get corrected with future updates. Also, something else I'd like to bring up, if you're experiencing any screen tearing problems, it might be because you're using a 720p TV when playing with this emulator. I have noticed when I'm hooked to a 720 TV, I get screen tearing problems, but when I'm hooked to a 1080p TV, I don't get any issues at all with screen tearing. So I'm not quite sure what's going on with that, but I figured I should bring it up. Okay, it's time for me to get out of here. If you liked that video, if you could, please hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe, and have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time.